Men, and as usual, I use the term loosely. Uh, you have in front of you a cornucopia, a plethora, or as I like to say, a shitload of heads. Uh, I've got two engine rebuilds going on and uh, a set of customers sent in. Uh, this is the set that was sent in. Uh, the bike was running more or less okay, I guess. He's concerned because there is oil on top of his pistons. Uh, I really don't think the oil is coming from the valve guides, although the owner thinks it's coming from the valve guides. But anyway, uh, we're going to pull these apart, take a look at them, and uh, do a valve job on them, or as much of a valve job as it needs. I'm not convinced it needs a lot of uh, valve work. I just want to take a look at it. Uh, the second set over here is for... Uh, a, uh, actually a whole project chopper that I'll be getting into later. I'm going to do the engine first. Uh, these heads concern me and I'll show you why in a minute. And we have another engine rebuild, just the engine that was shipped in and it's these guys over here. So let's kind of take a look at them and, uh, and a little bit of an initial assessment on them. Um, one of the things I look for One of the things I look for is how deeply sunk into the head the valves are. Uh, that's kind of indicative of how many valve jobs it has had done to it. And eventually you reach a point where too much of the valve stem is sticking out uh, the other side. And uh, uh, it screws all kinds of things up. The, the tension on the springs is wrong. The geometry of the rocker arm is wrong. On some of them, the more deeply they sunk in, uh, the other end of the rocker arm comes down and you can't get the push rods in and out. So you got to kind of keep an eye on that. Um, these, the intake is a little low. I think it's probably going to need some shims, but it's going to be okay. The exhaust valve looks okay. Uh, I don't know, same on this one. It's a little low, but I think it's good for maybe one more cut. The exhaust valve, exhaust valve the same thing. Uh, these heads, yeah these heads, these heads are the ones I'm worried about. Uh, the exhaust valve is really low. Uh, intake looks like it might be okay, but the exhaust valve is really deeply cut in the heads. I'm almost 100% positive this is going to need a hardened seat. Uh, intake might be okay. And here is the other, other head. And this exhaust valve is really deeply cut in there. Uh, that one's going to need a hard and see for sure. Intake might be okay. And then the last set over here, uh, they're actually sitting fairly high on the seat. So I think these two will be okay and just need a normal valve job on them. Uh, so let's, you know what, let's try something. I got an idea. Okay, this is uh, one of the heads off the uh, project chopper this guy wants me to build for him. And uh, he said the bike was running okay, was going down the road, all of a sudden it lost power. He did a compression check on it and there was virtually none. Uh, I've got the engine, uh, actually I've got the engine apart. The bottom end is actually already back together again. I'm getting ready to start on the top end. Um, and this valve looks really bad. Uh, I got my little light bulb on the end of a stalk here and you should be able to see light is actually coming through the edges on this valve in several places 
Uh, this rail, I think, is on the verge of actually falling all the way into the port. Uh, interesting. Rarely have I seen any where you could actually see light coming through from the backside. So we know this one is trashed. Let's look at its buddy. This one does not look quite as bad. I don't know if we'll get the same effect or not. Actually, I saw a little flash of light come through down in this area. Can't get the light bulb in the right spot. Well, maybe a little bit. Yeah, maybe a little bit you can see right in through here. So these two are bad. Uh, I can't wait to get these apart, but we're not going to start with these. We're going to start with one of the other sets. Okay, I'm not going to bore you with uh, taking all six of these apart on camera because they're all the same. But uh, I'll show you how I get the valves out, uh, what I find to be easiest. I got an old piston. This is 900cc piston, but it works okay. Stick it in the uh, head to uh, keep the valves from getting pushed in when I lean on them with the uh, spring compressor. I have a hole drilled in my workbench and uh, some guys have uh, one of them clamping a vise deal medusa that's uh, screwing to a spark plug hole to hold on to a head. Uh, I'm sure those work just fine. But in the meantime the hole in my bench and a piece of you know, dollar ninety-eight threaded rod works uh, just as well, at least for me. Doesn't need to be real tight, just to keep it from swimming around on you. Uh, this little doodad I made. Screw it into one of the rocker box holes. There are other kinds of spring compressors, I'm sure, but this is what I use. Now, keepers out. That's all there is to it. Alright, I'm just going to talk about, well, I'm going to talk about the worst of the bunch. Uh, this is the one where you could see light uh, coming through around the edge of the valve. Uh, I was expecting to see a lot of burning and erosion around here, uh, but really there isn't. The seat actually doesn't look too bad. Uh, the only problem with it, of course, is that it's much, much too deep into the head. Uh, and here's the valve out of there. And uh, I was expecting to see a lot of burning around here, invisible erosion. There really isn't. What you do notice, though, is there's no wear ring. Uh, this valve doesn't even look like it was contacting the seat. And that would lead me to believe that it was adjusted way too tight. So, then it went, so that when it closed, it was actually being held off of the seat, uh, hence no compression. Uh, it's entirely possible, with as deeply as that seat is cut, that the valve was adjusted as loose as it could be, and it just couldn't go any farther. Um, uh, so that might be the problem here. Um, as far as the guide is concerned, you'll like this. Get the focus back. As far as the guide is concerned, you like this. Look how much play there is in the guide. Uh, most of the guides I check just like this. And uh, this is the worst one of the bunch, that's for sure. Uh, the other ones are really, you know, they're kind of borderline. Uh, we're going to replace them all anyway. Uh, I just like them to be consistent when I go to put the new valves in. 
um, you know, everything will be uh, will will be consistent from one head to one head to the next, uh, and you know, both heads on the same bike will end up being the same. Uh, most Okay, you can of course beat them out with a hammer if you don't have a press, but if you have a press, why not use it? that all there is to it a couple of closing notes before I wrap this video up uh, this head well you see all of this this is silicone on here and you never want to see this this much silicone anything this shit here is what breaks off it could go through your melt motor end up in your oil pump uh, you never want to see this the best defense against leaks is a clean, smooth surface. This is this is just no good. So you never want to see any of that. This shit, this shit could start clogging up these oil passageways. A piece of this gets into gears in your oil pump, it'll break the oil pump, I guarantee. This is no good. Don't ever do that. I don't use silicone on the engine proper. I do use it on primary because it's the only thing that'll seal primary cover up. But a primary is not uh, an area where it can get sucked into an oil pump. Um.